Hi. Hello. Welcome to College of Lore. I'm Jill. I'm Kate. And we're going to be discussing Genesis, Genesis. today. Ooh. Very excited about this. Um, so I just got this book for Christmas. So this is like an opening Christmas gifts kind of stream. Yeah. Um, but I have played Genesis before and Jill had the Genesis book from not that long before Christmas, right? Yes. It wasn't too, too long. Yeah. Um, and part of my, uh, daily Christmas gift in December to Jill was a set of Genesis dice. Yeah. It was really cute. It was a bit of a mystery. That yeah. I had to solve. Yeah. You figured it out immediately, though. You're like, oh, what are these? I think they're Genesis dice. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't 100% sure, though, because, um, let me see. Because, like, I kind of recognized the symbols, but it had been a while since I had uh, looked at the book. Looked at the book. So, yeah. but then I kind of did a flip through, and they're very cool. I should have brought yeah. them up for this stream. They're down. It's okay. Uh, I'll show you what I did for the dice because I didn't purchase a dice set for myself, but there is an app. Mm. So it does cost money. I think it was like six or seven dollars Canadian, but yeah, you're not going to be able to see this at all. Oh, you kind of so. can. The dice are at the bottom. Yeah, so in this system, uh, when I'm making a dice pool, I'm going to say that I have two of these green dice and one yellow die. That might be like a skill check that I'm doing. And that's like from my abilities. But then the task is somewhat difficult. So there's like um, a purple die and a red die for that. And then you just roll it. Ah. And it has a really great animation. Where do you roll? Oh, Ooh. yeah, that's cute. It looks like you shook the box. Yeah. I wonder if I can shake it. Oh, yeah. I totally can shake it to make it re-roll the dice. That is awesome. <laughs> I love that. And then it tabulates the results up top for you that automatically, is which is nice because, like, I'm sure that eventually once we get used to playing this game, that will become very natural. Mm -hmm. But the way that this works, we'll get into this, but the way that this works there's certain symbols that cancel out other symbols. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. like things that cancel out hits or whatever. And so you have to be like, okay, pairing them all up and like figuring out what you have left over, basically. What's the remainder? Right. And that's, that's your result for that role. Right. I do like that. I think that's going to be really fun. Yeah. And so I, I like having that app. Maybe someday I'll buy the dice but I don't need it. I have right. that now. And that's actually like slightly more convenient than the dice, but it's not as tactile. Yes. There's, there's pros and cons. Pros and cons. Yes. So yeah, what I'd like to do is just kind of go th sort of start flipping through this book and like talking about the system and the things about it that I find unique, because I don't know if I've said this yet, but I, I did play a game of Genesis one session one time. Okay. Um, at like a weekend RPG thing that mm. we have. Um, with some friends and the whole weekend is just meant to be like different RPGs mm -hmm. um, and so somebody brought uh, it was prop I think it was either Sean or my friend Rob who who ran I think it was Rob who ran it anyways I played it one time and it was cool but the cool thing about this game so well if you start off I think well introduction is just the typical what's a role-playing game but uh the thing that's interesting about this system is that unlike pretty much, well, I can't think of another system that is like this. Um, it is, it is setting agnostic. So most RPGs like D and D is like a fantasy setting. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a specific world that you're working in. Like you're in Faerun or whatever you have like a, a determined universe and if if you're not going by one of the published ones then you're you know creating your own but it's going to be a fantasy theme mm -hmm. with orcs and elves and wizards and like it takes some and... work to change the setting it's yeah like you would have to be basically completely recreating everything in order to do like a science fiction uh game with D, &D rules mm -hmm. um 
But Genesis is designed so that you could do a fantasy game, you could do a science fiction game, you could do a horror game, you could do a modern day game, a medieval game, whatever you want. The The setting is up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think so the only one I, that I've heard of like that is GURPS. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. So that's that's unique yeah and i like it i'm so excited about so i have read through like how the dice work and i yeah it is such a cool mechanic i haven't yeah. played it myself though so like yeah so let's do like a quick summary of that because mm-hmm. i did kind of read through that stuff recently as well so the basic gist is your when you have to do a skill check when you're trying to do something that you wouldn't immediately succeed at normally Mm -hmm. just like in any rpg you have to do a check to see if you succeed at doing the thing you're gonna generate a pool of dice this reminds me a little bit of um uh, end of the world RPG mm-hmm. because it's the same kind of thing like you generate this pool of dice but these are all different with all their fancy symbols mm-hmm. and so there's some positive dice and there's some negative dice so you can see the positive dice are the yellow green and blue dice and the negative dice are the purple black and red dice and you're gonna add those different dice for different things the basic ones that you're adding are for your skill and um characteristics like how good you are at doing that thing you're going to add the green and the yellow dice Um, and then blue the d6s are like just situational things so Mm -hmm. if there's something else that's going on in this particular scenario that gives you an advantage or an edge you could add a blue die for that Um, and then each of the negative dice kind of correspond to the positive dice so the black d6 is like a situational thing but it detriment it's a detriment to you um yeah so you figure out like what you get from your own innate abilities from situational advantages or disadvantages and how hard or challenging the task is and that's the dice pool that you generate and then you roll the dice and then based on the symbols that appear you get a certain outcome so you might get um, hits. Where is the thing? Yeah, there's a success, which is just this little like burst symbol. But successes are canceled out by failures, which are this little X symbol. So for every X that you roll, you get rid of one of your successes that you've rolled. And in order to succeed at the test, you have to end up with some successes that didn't get canceled out. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, you might roll advantage uh, symbols, which is like that little triangle, that little triangle slash A looking thing. Yes, we made the same symbol. <laughs> um, do we have and... to when we play? Do we have to do that every time we get one? We have to be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do for sure. Um, so those advantages are also canceled out by the threat symbol, which looks kind of like this like triangle but with a circle through it and broken it's like a circle with some lines in it yeah anyways so just like the hits like the successes the advantages can be uh canceled by uh threats and so if you end your die roll with leftover uh advantages then regardless of whether you succeeded or not something positive comes out of this role but if you end with some um what are they called again threats left over then something negative happens regardless of whether the role was successful or not right so there's like did you do the thing you wanted to do or not and then like does something else good happen or does something else bad happen or maybe it's neutral i love that because it isn't just like oh yes you succeeded and like it doesn't just land on the gm or whoever to um elaborate and it's like yes and or yes but or anything like that it like specifically says more happens so put more into it like i think that's a really good tool for storytelling yeah for sure and i think in this book too it does sort of it's it 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 states that the gm is sort of the arbiter of the rules and the person who gets to decide for sure what happens but it does encourage players to 
uh, make suggestions for that. what happens. So you would, you know, you would all determine together what the result of the role was. And then if you as a player think like, oh, well, here's an advantage that could happen. You should speak up and say what that is. And if the GM likes it, you know, and doesn't think that it's too much of an advantage, yeah. then yeah, then you'll, then you'll go ahead and. Yeah, I love the collaborative happen. storytelling of a lot of TTRPGs. And I feel like yeah. Genesis has a really good edge in that yeah. area. I think building the dice pool is an opportunity for that as well. Um, because, you know, you're going to be do, you're going to try and do something. Mm -hmm. And so similar to like kids on bikes or kids on brooms, I might say like, this is what I want to do and here's how I'm going to do it. So I think I should get to use my agility and this skill, the specific agility skill to do that. And here's why that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then, well, I also have like, this skill so i think maybe i should get a blue die for that or whatever like mm -hmm. you can rationalize it however you and want then the gm can... can come back and be like however these vines have sticky pods on them so you're yes. slowed by <laughs> yeah exactly so i'm in I, i'm into the dice thing mm -hmm. the dice pool thing um i like it's kind of fun because you always get to roll a bunch of dice yeah um, but then things cancel out. So it's yeah. not, it's not going to result in like something too crazy mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool. Um, the characteristics are interesting. They're, they're kind of pretty standard, right? So these are like your, your base stats. You've got agility, brawn, cunning, intellect, presence, and willpower. Mm -hmm. So the words are slightly different than other RPGs, but if you've played other RPGs, you can, you probably don't even like need to read these paragraphs describing what mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. Like they're all fairly intuitive. Um, but what happens is these are your characteristics and those are sort of like your basic abilities. And then you'll have skills that are sort of more specific skills that are related to those characteristics. Mm -hmm. And whenever you do a skill check, you pick like a pair of those. And that's how you roll your dice. That's how you mm -hmm. figure out your die pool. Yeah, I think that's fairly common in a lot of uh, TTRPGs too. Like um, Call of Cthulhu yeah. does that, I think. But uh, I know Vampire the Masquerade does that for sure. Yeah. The interesting thing here is like you take those two mm -hmm. and then um, you figure out which one is higher. Like which one has the higher number. Mm -hmm. So say your uh let's say your agility is three and your acrobatics i don't even know if that's one of them is two right so you'd see which one is higher that's three so that means that you get three of those green dice and then because your uh skill characteristic is two that's the number of those green dice that you get to upgrade to a yellow die oh but yeah. if it was if it was the opposite and your like agility or skill score was higher than your characteristic you would end up with the same role. So your character can use like skills and training to overcome like weaknesses in their own. Um, oh, interesting. Like, char so, characteristics. So if you train, you can kind of overcome a weakness and like, say I trained in like acrobatics. We're just going to keep with that analogy, I guess. Acrobatics, sure. but I have weak agility that can help me overcome my weakness in my agility. Yeah, because cool. you'll still get, so like if you get three ranks in agility, mm -hmm. you'll get three dice in your pool. Ah. You won't get as many upgraded to yellow. Okay. But the interesting thing is that like somebody who has sort of like a weaker level of training, but higher natural skill would have the same dice pool as somebody who had lower natural skill, but more training. I love that. Yeah. Because it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like real life a little bit. Like you can work and yeah. achieve things that yeah. like you're not just stuck in how you were started, how you were, yeah. how you came yeah, to be. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> One thing I just want to poke in here is just how beautiful I find the art in this. It has this like sketchy feel to it and it all has that same feel to kind of create these very alive and also like really technically accurate drawings and, and pieces. And I, I just love the art in these books. But I, li I like how it is sort of sketchy because that is how the RPG feels. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that you're going to put into this mm -hmm. to like finish it off. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like like this, the is the, this is the skeleton mm -hmm. and it has to be that way so that it can be so flexible. Yeah. Interesting. Love it. 
Um, cool. So, and what's interesting probably... too, from an art standpoint, is like I have worked in the animation industry, and when we we're doing backgrounds and stuff, we would often start with like blue lines. And then we would build on top of that. So that very much looks to me like a work in progress. Like they, yes, it, it's connecting with me on a very uh, and, professional level. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be a theme like throughout, like there's some different accent colors as you go through the book, mm -hmm. but it, it the, the base sketch is all sort of blue. Yeah, that color, yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah, so I mean, that's, basically the essence of the game your character is going to have characteristics and skills and those are going to be the basis to forming the dice pools there's like difficulty of the checks and that determines partially how many um yeah how many negative dice get added into the dice pool but like basically that's how the whole that's how the whole game works yeah um so the variety comes in um creating characters and the variety in character creation comes from like optional setting rules that the GM decides to include. So when you're creating your character, uh, you kind of need to know the type of setting that you're going to be in. Obviously. I mean, they say things like you would never create a medieval knight if you were doing a modern day setting. I would argue that if like, somebody really wanted to play a medieval knight i could come up with a fun creative like time travel yeah. thing haven't they but... seen night before christmas right the, <laughs> the netflix special <laughs> yeah but the basic idea is like you'll know kind of your setting and then that's where you'll generate your background like your character's background from mm -hmm. so you figure out kind of the type of character that you want to play and then you'll select either a character archetype or species so the the base sort of game comes with these four different archetypes it's like different types of humans that you could play so yeah. there's like average human the laborer the intellectual the aristocrat so it's like the generalist like the jack of all trades then like the tank and then like the the mentally skilled like wizard type character and then the social character, mm -hmm. right? So all those four like archetypes that you kind of see repeated over and over again in different RPGs, mm -hmm. um, they have those four. But then, you know, we're, that's not what we're going to be doing. We have this, um, I guess I'll just say yeah, what I'm going to do now. Yeah. So, and this is covered in this book in the settings area. They give some examples of different settings. So maybe we can like skip ahead to there. So this uh, is... I want to point out one more thing. I really sure. like that they put at the bottom here, like, what part you're in. Like, I was able to open to the settings part really easily. Right, because it's on the page. Yeah, it's just down at the bottom there. It's very convenient. Yes. So in settings, the setting that I want to do is a space opera setting. Okay. And I'm trying to find it. I think it's actually the last one there weird it is war. so they've got fantasy they've got um, steampunk they've got weird war modern day science fiction and then and then space, space opera. opera right so space opera is interesting to me and if you flip over to the very next page uh it talks about an example oh. setting twilight imperium so twilight imperium is one of my absolute favorite board games. Um, it just came out with an expansion that uh, we're picking up this week. Ooh. And I mean, ever since I found out that this source book had this sort of little, little teaser for a setting for Twilight Imperium in it, I wanted to run uh, an your, RPG. Your eyes turned into little hearts. Yeah, because I love, like, I mean, I love the board game, but I love the theme. It's just, like, jam-packed, full of lore and theme. It's this grand space opera where, in the board game, you're playing one of the factions who's vying for, like, galactic supremacy. 
So you need to get like victory points and win the game. But it's so it's so thematic. It's so thematic and really, really great. All the different factions, like if you flip the faction sheet over, it has like a huge bio slash background about that faction. They've released a novel in oh. this universe. Like it's very, very heavy, lore heavy. So um, I love that about it. And so I'm really interested in um, setting up an RPG scenario in this world uh, because it's very rich um, and there's a lot of like, you know, ideas that I have floating yeah. around in my head, specifically between like playing out what is happening in like an action in the board game, but like role playing like what that actually means right mm. so in the new board game there's like a, a planet exploration mechanic so that Ooh. when you go to a new planet that nobody's been to yet you get to explore that planet and you're gonna find something random there and that like changes the planet or gives you like a relic that you found or whatever like it's it's this cool like exciting every yeah um that's so, definitely yeah. something that I'm very interested in playing in an RPG is like that kind of going to a planet and discovering things. I think that would be like top well, of that's, my fun pile. That's what that's what I have in mind. That is, would, it's yeah, going to be I'm like excited. the the group would be like uh 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 like they would they group. would they would be on a mission it would yeah. be like okay your mission is to now go and explore this planet and sort of take control of that area and see what's there and you know expand our reach or whatever and then you get to the planet and see what you see and find what you find and i love it i love it yeah i read a lot so, of like novels looking for that you know, like just trying to get some sci-fi goodness in there. So I think this would oh, be Oh, well, I think that you'll really love it. And yeah. then, so, yeah. So the the book has sort of like a, a page or two describing what space opera is and kind of getting you on the same page mm -hmm. if that's what you want to do. And then in the Twilight Imperium setting section, it gives some new starting character options. So these are sort of, instead of those four basic human archetypes, you can use these archetypes. So they've got animalistic aliens. And then that's what this picture of the space cat is. That's, hmm. the, that's an emirate of Hakan. It's yeah. one of the factions. And so it's talking about that faction, really. And then the psionic faction is probably something like um, the Nalu Collective or maybe the Jolnar. Um, then there's this robot faction, which is um, like the Necrovirus. And Vanguard is probably just the Federation of Soul, I think. Not that any of this means anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> because you've never played the game. Right. But I remember you... you passing me and letting me look at the, um, like the boards and like the minis and the stuff. The faction sheets. Yeah, the yeah. faction sheets. Yeah. yeah. I did really like them. They're beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the plan is to run a, a scenario. I, the plan is to do like one session. It might span two streams. Um, and then we'll see. We'll see what we think. Yeah. Um, about it but yeah my, my hope is to teach jill how to play twilight imperium to because i think that's like the easiest way to get somebody up to speed on the world mm -hmm. like the setting mm -hmm. um, i have watched multiple how to play twilight imperium videos but i don't remember anything right now but i'm assuming yeah. that if i was sitting there i'd remember some of it yeah. And then I watching those videos is tricky because it's a lot all at once. Mm -hmm. So I like to take things a little bit slower if I can and like actually start playing in between mm -hmm. explaining everything mm -hmm. just because it's like, OK, I told you all this stuff and it took an hour and now I'm going to have to re-explain <laughs> things to you anyways as we, as we play because you'll have forgotten it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But at least you don't have to do that for her because I already watched the videos. So I have like a right. little, I have like a kernel of base knowledge. Yeah. A kernel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it'll be really fun. My plan. So yeah, the plan is hopefully we can do this next week. We'll learn to play Twilight Imperium and play like a round or two of the game because yeah. it's a very long game and we're not going to finish it on 
Tuesday next right. week. Um, but um, I want to sort of, there's these sort of base six factions, so I'll get everybody to choose one of those to play the game with because they're a little bit simpler. Yeah. But then when it comes time to, yeah, play this RPG, we'll sort of figure out what faction you guys want to be. And I'm going to be the maybe cat you're, Maybe you're... Maybe you're not all... Actually, there's two cat factions now. Um... <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So I'm really, really looking forward to trying this out. Yeah, I'm excited too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun too. Like, I'm yeah. really excited about the Genesis um, system, and I'm really excited to give it a try. Yeah. I still haven't read like a lot of this stuff. For example, I haven't read the details of combat um, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I have not read the GM section at the back of the book. Um, but I don't know that I necessarily need to because I flipped through and it seems to be a lot of like how to create a custom skill. Right. So if you have an idea for a skill that you want people to be able to have but it's not represented in the list that they give you in the book mm -hmm. then it shows you how to do that and it tells you how to create a new species or archetype so all this stuff is important for the gms to know how to do because maybe what you want isn't covered in these examples that they've given you but the system is supposed to be flexible to do like whatever you want so so the stuff is important but i don't know if i need it to run yeah. Like the TI yeah. How to create an item that might be useful because you guys might be like, well, I have this such and such weapon and I'll have, you know, I think that's cool. So I want to create it for you or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a little character. I might need to create an adversary or two for you. Yes. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I, I really am now. The more that I, the more that I get into the book and read through the book, the more excited I am. Because I, I think like when I was, when I hear it's flexible, you can do whatever you want. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, okay, but that must be hard. How right? do I know what I want? <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, like how do I create something that's not there? And it seems to me, well, first of all, I don't really have to because they have enough like variety and examples in that section that I think you could just like pick something. Mm -hmm. um, but also I do think it looks like it would be fairly easy to customize something and make something sort of from scratch yeah. with this system. So I, I think it's pretty cool good <laughs> yeah i'm looking forward to to playing it and it, what might be kind of cool is like um if we find another i don't know franchise another th uh, like well in i property we want to turn into a game later down the road i have one now it's not that different because it's i don't know if you remember this but i i kickstarted uh I kickstarted this thing. It's like a ship design based on uh, the Rocinante from um, The Expanse. Oh, it's called okay. Cervantes. Anyways, I have like the ship plan for that ship, the, the, the main ship in The Expanse series. Nice, yeah. And so ever since I got that, I've been wanting to do a Expanse themed that would be really cool. uh, session in using that using that map um so like on that ship um and i would like to use genesis to do that i think there is actually an expanse rpg oh, yes. but i read the quick start rules and was it wasn't like reading this like i was like mm. you weren't as captivated mm. like i didn't feel it mm. so yeah i i don't think i want to use those rules yeah so I might, but so I mean, it's just science fic. It's another science fiction thing, but it's it's a specific franchise, yeah. and that's the nice thing. Like I think, you know, maybe you have some really weird niche theme that's not covered by any of the suggestions in this book, but I don't think that that's likely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you can probably at least start with one of the things that they've included in here, and 
maybe you can show that little book that you showed me. Yeah, because so that's I picked. Yeah, up that's what this is for. An expanded player's guide here, and yeah. it has some rules for um, the Age of Myths. So we're talking like you know Greek mythology and other things like that. Uh, monster world. So that's things like Frankenstein's monster and uh, horror, like that classic horror kind of a feel. And then also post apocalypse. And that just gets you started just like in that first book with, um, let's go to the beginning here. Like yeah. it gives you some character suggestions and adversaries and things like that. Just like in the um, core yeah. book. So you know just increasing the number of different right. types of yeah. settings that they're giving you sort of specifics to get for started. yeah so yeah in case you ever wanted to run a minotaur we've got some rules for it right here yeah <laughs> one like sort of critique of this that i i mean i I'm really excited about this, but I don't like it when people are like super 100% positive about things. So I do think it's like, I like the dice. I like the dice because we like, we like things, yeah. right? We like those things. Yeah. But you do have to buy a specific set of dice to play this game. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I remember when I played it, we didn't have the specific dice. So we were just using regular like D12s and whatever. But we had this like a chart. card that like indicated what each number was. And it was just like very confusing. Yeah. I could so see that. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's something about this RPG that it's not going to use that standard set of dice that you might already have, like, mm -hmm. a million of. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, it's it's got to be a new set of dice. But, I mean, they are cool, and they work really well, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like the core mechanic of the, of the game. Yeah. So... You know. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I, you know, you, like having to go out of your way to buy, and I don't know how pricey they were, but having to go out of your way to like purchase a specific yeah. set of dice is kind of hard when, like, like, yeah, you know, you could have one set of dice that runs um, almost every other. Yeah. TV and TV. and there's the app, like I said, yes. which is great, and it's cheap. It is cheaper than buying the physical set of dice. Yes. Um, but it's not free either. It, it costs money. So. Yeah. I, yeah. That that's a little bit surprising to me, actually. Like, I mean, maybe if the game was more popular, they'd be able to afford to have a free app. Like, I don't know. But still, ha you know, like already, it's a little bit harder to get into than just, you know. I feel like. Um, companies like this have a reputation for like nickel and diming a bit, you know, uh, like, oh, and here's another source book and here's an updated yeah, 65th that... edition of D&D, &D, you know, it's yeah. like, I just want, <laughs> like, I bought this thinking it was going to yeah. be like, a, like, here's the core rule book. I was like, ooh, thick, lots of stuff. And I was thinking like this kind of expanded book was going to be another like thick book. And then I got it and it's kind of like itty bitty skinny yeah Here, wait i should yeah. compare you know yeah it's quite thin so yeah so i i feel that a little bit here yeah, i feel a I little bit like that. well here's this book and that's all you need technically yeah but you should probably buy this dice set and you should probably buy this like expanded rule book if you want these settings and and vehicle rules we've got some vehicle rules oh yeah and cool. i do i do want vehicle rules you'll we'll have them so, anyways, I mean that's a very minor complaint. Yes. Because they I mean I'm buying money. it. They I'm gotta pay buying... the artists. They gotta pay yes. the developers. They gotta pay yes. the you know, they gotta make money. They do. Yeah. So and it's like Yeah, whatever. Uh, it doesn't really bother me, but it is something that is not like standard. The special dice, right? Mm -hmm. A standard RPG uh just uses regular a polyhedral set of dice mm -hmm. or some subset like only d10s or only d6s or whatever right. yeah. yeah um yeah but i'm i'm super 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 excited and I, I feel good about this system i feel like you know you could do anything with it yeah that's so exciting and i think oh oh 
Something that we didn't really talk about that is a cool mechanic in the game is how you create your characters. They have this like point by system. Mm -hmm. So you pick your archetype slash faction mm -hmm. and that gives you this base level in each of the characteristics. And then you get a certain amount of experience points that you can spend on increasing your, your, your characteristics, mm -hmm. training up in skills and traits. I think that they're called traits. They're kind of like feats. Okay. Um, those are the three things that you can use to kind of improve your character. And so at the beginning, when you're creating your character, that's the only time that you can use experience to increase your characteristics. Oh, okay. So you're going to spend most of your like beginning XP bumping up your characteristics, mm -hmm. but then you pick like a job and that gives you like a subset of skills that are like easier for you to learn. You have to spend less XP to learn them. Um, and then you start with some ranks in those skills. And then from there you go and you, that's what you do with your experience points. So there's no like level one, level two, level three. It's right. like every session you get experience points. And whenever you want, you can spend that experience to rank up your skill or to get a new trait or whatever you want. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to giving that a shot. Especially so it's like, if we have a couple of sessions of the game, because then we can actually like spend some stuff in the middle and get a feel for that. Yeah. 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 That sounds good to me. Cool. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, what I was going to say about you mentioned how you can do pretty much anything with the system. I feel like when I just bought this and I was reading through it, I think it is going to be easier to come up with things I can do with it once I play it. You know, because mm -hmm. I feel like, um, like I've been reading a lot of TTRPGs and learning a lot of different rule sets lately, and some are very easy to just like pick up and run with. And I think this one for me might be one of the ones where I kind of need to see it run to get a better feel for how it goes. Yeah, I think it's it's on the simple side, mm. but it's not simple. Okay, you know what I mean? It's like near the middle complexity wise that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah it's not yeah. it's not as yeah you can't just like pick up and run with it but like yeah i i think once i just see it happen the one time i'm gonna be like oh i, yeah. I could run this <laughs> yeah 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 i'm excited i'm looking forward to experiencing this with you me too <laughs> yeah so it'll probably be a little while till we actually play the game right but it's in the works. I'm reading the book. I'm figuring it out. We're, yeah. we're getting Jill up to speed on the lore of Twilight Imperium. <laughs> You're going to love it. Even if you don't like the game, I think you will really like the, the world. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's... I will too. I really love alien stuff and I love space exploration and yeah. I, I love that stuff so i know it's like, i'm gonna love that. it's like politics and mm -hmm. really nuanced like interactions and histories that exist between these different factions it's very cool yeah yeah huh. awesome well i guess that's that's all we got for you tonight friends in the the, yeah. the twitch verse um i hope you enjoyed our talking about genesis and uh, let us know if you've played before if you are planning on playing it, if it, let us know if you've done anything interesting with these rule sets, like what kind of games you've spun with them. And yeah. uh, we'll see you next time. Yay! <laughs>